corrosion. The infamous old enemies of the crime fighter. The wrestling life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It is episode 294. It is the first week of March of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. That's right, and so many, many things we can't talk about right here on the first and still the only wrestling podcast. Well, AEW has a pay-per-view coming up this weekend, but uh, they also had a major announcement after announcing a major announcement. They delivered the major (laughs) announcement after announcing an announcement. An entire wrestling promotion built on announcing announcements. They announced that they have uh, purchased... Tony Khan announced that he has purchased Ring of Honor on this week's AEW Dynamite. I don't know what to make of this. What do you think? I guess the the interesting stuff is, I think, the in the minutia of this. One is that it is specifically noted in that press release, AEW does not own Ring of Honor. Tony Khan, using a separate company, owns Ring of Honor. So I don't know what that means as far as, because everyone would think that the, the pluses of having that tape library that has thousands of hours of Brian Danielson and CM Punk and plenty of other people on your roster, uh, you know, their careers, Adam Cole, um, all, all of these people's, you know, some of their greatest matches. And it also adds to your total number of hours when you go to a streaming service to try to, to try to get them to pay you money to go, I have X amount of hours of content I can throw on your station or on your, on your service. Um, but if they're two separate entities and plan to be kept that way, well, that's more confusing to me as to how that helps AEW get an HBO max deal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if they were going to get on HBO Max, though, that that deal probably would have already happened. Mm. And I think maybe eventually they want to start their own streaming service. And I don't necessarily think a delineation in between. I mean, Tony Khan's family owns AEW. Tony Khan owns (laughs) Ring of Honor now. I think he can make a deal with himself. (laughs) If he wants to. If he wants to put if he wants to put Ring of Honor on his AEW streaming service at some point. But to your point, it, yeah, there's uh it's you know it wasn't acquired by AEW uh Inc. or LLC or whatever it is. So mm-hmm. yeah, could be nothing, could be something. But what are you buying when you buy Ring of Honor? <laughs> You're buying a tape library and a dead brand that has like four wrestlers under contract all of whom will no longer be under contract by the last day of this month. And they have one show scheduled for next month. What are you buying? Yeah, that's a really good question. In the, again, in the press release, it kind of notes, it's like, well, it's buying the tape library as well as all trademarks uh, and, and associated assets of the brand or something. And one would, I guess you get the rings. (laughs) He bought an old truck. (laughs) He's going to tinker with it. Uh, yeah, like I don't, I don't know what you do. I think you can try to, as we have talked about, they have a lot, a lot of people under contract. This again goes in in the direction of uh, you using it kind of like as a feeder system. Um, like it's it's your brand that you own, even if it's technically a separate company, and you can send the you know Brock Anderson and his bla- big blue underpants to work Ring of Honor for for six months, where he gets to wrestle more regularly and have more you know, televised matches and you, you mix in some of that veteran talent onto those shows and stuff. If you want to run it, is Sinclair still going to run a weekly ring of honor? Does they, do they still want to run a weekly ring of honor show? I don't think so. I think they're going to be running. Wow. In a lot of markets. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So like, I don't, I don't know other than, yeah, I guess it could be you could, yeah, you can create your own NXT, I guess, or your own, or your own uh, OVW, I guess, but I don't, you kind of could have done that under the AEW banner anyway. Um, yep. So I guess, yeah, it feels like the only thing of value was that tape library. 
And I mean, there's only one other company in the world that would value that, right? Like, and I don't even know how much WWE would care about that because they fired a lot of people. <laughs> they used to have a lot of people that worked Ring of Honor for a lot of their careers. Now they have less less people, but they still have, you know, Seth Rollins and AJ Styles and a few others like that, that they, you know, could maybe benefit from having that footage. But other, other than that, like it's, it seems like maybe you just buy it to, as you said, add hours to if AEW launches a, their own streaming service, then, or whatever the plan is for, for that going forward, you have more stuff on the show or more stuff to show on your, on your streaming service than just, you know, 85 hours of dark elevation or whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily get it. Um, I get, I think it depends what he, what, what he paid for it. And I don't know that we'll ever know that. Um, because the tape, the tape library is valuable for all the reasons we just laid out, but the brand itself, you know, you could use dark or dark elevation as uh, your feeder shows mm-hmm. um, instead of just doing 44 squash mashes uh, every week on them. Um, you know, you could they already have I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't get it. But <laughs> OK, cool. As, as usual with AEW, it's like, eh, this isn't for me, but all right. <laughs> People, people seem to be excited about it. Good for them. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, I think it's a net positive that WWE isn't going to own the Ring of Honor library, but I don't know. Like, it doesn't, it also doesn't feel like there's that much to it. And as far as, like we said, other than, yeah, it would be cool to be able to go back on a, on an easily, you know, watchable streaming service, go find you know, the best matches of, of Brian Danielson's early career and, and all of that, like that's fun. And then that's, that's a cool idea, but yeah, as far as like what you get out of the living brand, does it exist as a super indie? Does it exist? Do they, you know, do they throw it on? Does it also have a YouTube show and, you know, they do TV tapings in, you know, do they rent out Universal Studios for an extra week and do Ring of Honor tapings now. Like, I don't know. It's they can. It's one of those things where, yeah, you can do a bunch of stuff with it. But does any of it really show you or really give you any any long term benefit that you couldn't have already done under your own AEW banner other than the tape library, which we keep coming back to? Yeah, it's interesting. And I don't know that we're going to have any answers anytime soon. Um if there's one thing we know about Tony Khan, it's that he likes uh, he has an old truck he likes to take. <laughs> no, we we know that he likes he likes announcing announcements and he likes announcing th- announcing things, and he ha- always has like uh, it's he's like a, that on a hamster wheel chasing uh, something, and um, he apparently thought this is big enough to get on TV and use his Tony Khan promo voice, so. <laughs> You know, who might argue with them? Uh, I hope it works out again. I hope AEW succeeds. It's best for all of us and for the wrestling industry in general. If AEW succeeds, it's just one of those things where like off the bat, I, I just I don't I don't understand it. But OK, cool. <laughs> AEW Dynamite this week, uh, they had their go home show. I guess it's the go home show. Technically, Friday is Rampage's the go-home show, and it's Rampage's live this week. Nobody told JR that, though. No. JR, <laughs> JR does not work Fridays. And so when the show ends on Wednesday, he's always like, we'll see you next week, or we'll see you Sunday at the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Like, Jim, we got an hour of content on Friday that we want people to turn tune into. And <laughs> we probably got, you know, we probably got a uh, dark uh, also this week uh, before the pay-per-view um, that, we, we, you know, and, and Jim just Jim is in, Jim is in it for Jim. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Jim guy. Is Jim. Jim is a guy. He's a guy. He's always been a guy and he'll always be a guy. <laughs> But hey, uh, yeah. So they got they have they had a pretty 
they do go home shows well. It's maybe the one time they don't throw three million things at you and uh, just throw a bunch of spaghetti against the wall and see how much of it will stick. They're usually pretty focused about their go home shows. They this week, of course, threw in the Ring of Honor announcement. But they got that out of the way right away. And then they did some CM Punk and MJF thing has really turned a corner and gone and gotten great. I think the last couple of weeks, and that's not necessarily something I saw coming. Like I thought it was kind of paint by numbers and mm-hmm. maybe a little WWE ish in the storytelling. And then all of a sudden the last couple of weeks with MJF's promo last week and then MJF and punk this week and the, the bloodbath, uh, they, uh, that, that thing got great. Anyway, I thought it was a, a really good go home show. What'd you think of it? Yeah. I think you hit all of the, the notes you need to hit for, a go home show. I think I would agree that the, I think we talked about that maybe on our last show that we were feeling like the, the punk MJF stuff had been going for a long time and had never necessarily gotten out of that second gear. Um, but yeah, the MJF promo last week, setting the stage for, uh, you know, giving the hero a little bit of doubt of whether or not he should, you know, righteously murder this man at the pay-per-view and then turning it around and, and giving giving Punk a, a big beating and you know very very it's it's reminiscent of course of a I believe of a Ring of Honor angle that Punk did with Raven and uh, that also involved uh, a lot of blood and uh, of course both gentlemen wearing white so you you really got the you know as much out of that as you could and Punk bled like crazy so um, yeah it, it it was a great segment it was well performed by both guys. Um, Punk acknowledged his history of his true self, that being the meanest human being on the entire planet Earth, <laughs> um, who he is truly at his core. But, uh, you know, that he's trying to be a better person and has tried to be a better person for years now. And and uh, and then MJF sort of using that against him and uh, and and bl- bloodying him. And that, yeah, that sets the stage where at the end of that you go, that was great. And I want to see that little Punk get busted open on Sunday. So yeah, it was really good, really good stuff. And uh, the, the hangman Adam Cole stuff, I don't think has been great. Like I think they had one good promo and that just goes back to what we've talked about a couple of times on the show, which is that Adam, Adam page as the world champion has not been built around the way that for uh, other champions in this promotion have been to date. They just don't build the shows around him. And some of that, as you've talked about, might have something to do with the fact that he does have a, a very young child at home and isn't necessarily at every TV. And so maybe it's harder to do that. But um, I like I like that. I thought they had a good six man with uh, Dark Order and, and Red Dragon. And then you you add in. I thought it was a pretty good uh, you know final segment of them tying tying Hangman to the ropes and beating him up like they. They did, I think, as much as they could, given how sort of lackluster the rest of the build has been to to get you excited about about that match as well. So uh, the women's match. Brick Baker and Thunder Rosa, I feel like, should be a much bigger deal than it is, given that they've basically been building to it uh, disjointedly for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, when they just kind of a casually announced that it was happening like three weeks ago, I was kind of gobsmacked because it f- just felt like we were still we really hadn't heated up Rosa the way I would have thought they would have to get her ready. Like, uh, I mean, they had her beat Mercedes Martinez in a no DQ match that was very good and fun, but it just doesn't feel yeah, it doesn't feel like she's at her zenith but i also feel like they looked around as we probably talked about on the our last couple shows and they got no baby faces other than rosa even remotely ready to wrestle brit who she hasn't already beaten at least um so we're just going to that match so i mean that was the thing everyone assumed okay we'll build to it and eventually uh you know rosa will be the one to dethrone brit i mean you could do it here and I think the crowd would react and it would be, you know, people would like it, but it doesn't feel like this is the, oh, this is the culmination of the year of Britt Baker as world champion, uh, nor does it feel like, okay, if, if Britt loses the belt, then, you know, Thunder Rosa is the new top woman in the company. Like, I feel like we, 
as we've talked about for a long time, unless you're going to push someone higher and more and, you know, and use her and utilize <laughs> someone more than you currently are using Britt Baker, uh, just might as well keep the belt on her. Like if she's going to continue to be the, the top pushed act in that division. All right. So we've already talked about Hangman Page versus Adam Cole for the AEW title, CM Punk versus MGF in the dog collar match, and Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa for the AEW women's title. Those are the top three matches on some of these pay-per-view. A, there will also be a face of, face of the Revolution ladder match for a future TNT title shot. Keith Lee, Orange Cassidy, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starts, Wardlow, and then either Christian Cage or Ethan Page. Um, feels like the Keith Lee match. Yeah, I I can't. Why would you? <laughs> why would you put him in that as like his first real match if he wasn't going to win it? Would be my thought. But yeah, um, yeah, and it, it like there's nothing. There's no reason that he couldn't win that and then just go win the the TNT title and and you have a you know you bring him in and immediately you slot him as a you know upper upper card guy. Like so, yeah, this this that that's exactly what I would do. I guess that's the interesting thing about this ladder match is that. It's a bunch of hosses and uh, not not a lot of traditional like high flyers. So I don't know what this looks like from an actual like match standpoint. Yeah, we'll see. And Christian, if Christian ends up in the match, Christian's wrestling Ethan Page on Friday for the uh, for the last spot in the match. Christian hasn't had a match all year. Uh, Christian is 48. Uh, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily put him in a ladder match, uh, but. You know, I I have just thought that him being 48 is probably the number one factor in why he has become like the manager for Jurassic Express. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and hopefully that's all it is. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, Chris Jericho is wrestling Eddie Kingston. Chris Jericho. We've talked about this maybe a little bit on the show. Definitely a lot off the show. Uh, <laughs> Chris Jericho has always been very smart about keeping his keeping himself his t- television character fresh and changing his look up and uh, staying relevant for the last you know 25 years now and this biker gang <laughs> gfy jericho <laughs> is like such a miss it's like the pain maker is kind of a miss too but I feel like this is an even bigger miss. Like Jericho, who dresses like he's in a biker gang, and um, anyway, he's but he was been he has been totally outclassed by Eddie Kingston on the microphone, <laughs> in the back and forth that they've had in this uh, feud, and um, twenty twenty two Chris Jericho and uh, twenty twenty two Eddie Kingston. We'll see what kind of match they have. They should probably just have a a fight yeah i think that would be the the best that would probably be best for everyone would you do a you know an eight to ten minute sprint sort of thing that's just a lot of big moves and and violence and and uh like uh like kingston did with punk i think that's probably the the best thing you could do here jericho's dropped weight uh possibly due because he was in the hospital for a few weeks and uh, at the end of last year um he's so he's i don't but he's also only had i think he's only had what well, he had the what the the match with santana and ortiz and maybe one other one he has not wrestled a lot this year either so i don't know what kind of ring shape he's in even if he is you know looking a little bit better cosmetically but yeah this this jericho's version of f-u-n-b 2000 hulk hogan is uh it's it's rough anyway, and then you add in that he's in there with with Eddie Kingston, who's like just comes across as the like the realest, coolest guy, and it's just yeah, this is <laughs> this is uh, somewhat someone I can't remember who said it on Twitter, but it was never more evident how lame this GFY thing is than the night Jericho debuted it as a catchphrase was the night uh, John Moxley actually audibly in full detail told someone to go F themselves on live television. Yes. It's like, okay, there's a guy who really doesn't give a, give a hoot about what anybody thinks about him. And then there's Chris Jericho playing a guy who doesn't right. give a hoot. Yeah. 
Speaking of Moxley, Moxley and Brian Danielson are going to wrestle on this show. They've done some good promo work. I'm sure they'll have a good match. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll get the the most exciting thing. I guess is this is do they become do they get married and have and adopt three <laughs> wonderful sons after after this match? So I feel like the match will be good, but it feels like this is the first chapter of whatever will come next in that story, whether that's more matches or whether that's them being a team going forward. Tag title match. Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus defending against Red Dragon, defending against the Young Bucks. Here's what we know about this match. We know it's going to be good. We know it's going to go 30 minutes or more, and it should probably go about 20. And um, we'll see. We'll see. It, it, the Luchasaurus in a long match is not a recipe for success, but he's in there with, you know, five competent workers. So, yeah, I mean, I, this feels like, uh, a match where Red Dragon and the Young Bucks try to steal pins from each other, and ultimately their 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 in fighting leads to the the tag champs retaining. If I had to guess, yeah. There's a six man tornado match on the show: uh, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, and Sting against the Andrade Hardy family office of Andrade El Idolo, <laughs> Isaiah Cassidy, and Matt Hardy. I don't know what's going on with Andrade. I don't know why they signed him. I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know why he's linked up with Matt Hardy. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know, and I don't understand well, any of this. As well as Jeff Hardy told us, he's coming into AEW soon. <laughs> uh, and yeah. when he does, Matt's going to go babyface and team with Jeff, and then Andrade will just be in charge of this weird menagerie of the sex perverts and private party and whoever else. We know just to clarify, these are sex pests in storyline. Yes, sex sex perverts in in uh in, in the fictional world of AEW, not to my knowledge, anything about their real lives. Right. Uh there's a TBS title match on the show, Jade Cargill depending against Tay Conti. Jade is not gonna lose a match anytime soon. Uh no, it's uh they're they're doing a big Goldberg graphic after every match. So, yes. yep, we're just going to keep rolling with this for a while. And then on the pre show, Hook finally gets his hands on QT Marshall and Chris Statlander wrestles legit Layla Hirsch in a thing that they spent a lot of TV time on like a month ago and then have done like one promo segment for since. But hey, <laughs> They did that promo where Chris Statlander was like, I see why your parents oh. sent you to an orphanage. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then nobody ever, and then they just did nothing for a month. And they're like, oh, by the way, they're wrestling on the, on the free show. Oh my, so oh my gosh. We went to like, I understand. Like, I get why you were an orphan. And, uh, oh. and then we went to nothing. And now we're, they're going to grapple on Saturday or on Sunday evening. Oh, why did she? Why did she kill her? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever want to get in an argument with Chris Statlander. Is my takeaway from this feud? Very mean. <laughs> oh my word! Maybe she's the meanest human being on earth. Maybe she, maybe CM Punk has been usurped. All right, so that's uh, that's AEW stuff. WWE, they've been building towards. WrestleMania, they've been announcing matches for each night. The cards kind of getting uh, put together here. Vince McMahon was on Pat McAfee's show this week and uh, said sometimes he should have he expected more out of his family, <laughs> and <laughs> and said that he was going to induct the Undertaker into the uh, WWE Hall of Fame. So. He has done it now for Austin and Undertaker. Those are his guys. I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that, anyway, takeaways from Vince McMahon on McAfee. Uh, what did you, what did you uh, take away from that? Uh, one, yeah, it was all worth it just for him. <laughs> him uh, throwing, throwing Hunter and Shane under the bus. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, uh, Vince, per Vince standards, he was pretty lucid. Yeah. 
you could uh i didn't i should note i did not watch the entire interview uh but i did obviously see the the highlights and clips and everything and yeah you could you could understand what he was saying that's <laughs> that's a market improvement <laughs> over his over his raw segments although every time he tried to like clear his throat it sounded quite horrifying oh yeah oh yeah for sure yeah so that this was supposedly supposed to lead to uh, Vince versus McAfee. And my takeaway from this, my thought all along, this is this is going to be Austin Theory versus McAfee. Mm-hmm. And uh, nothing, nothing in that interview um, would have uh, would have taken that away from you or, or you you would have come away with from that interview thinking, oh, well, yeah, McAfee's going to wrestle uh, is going to wrestle Austin Theory at Mania. So, uh yeah, they, there, they had done a yeah. segment on Monday where Austin Theory was like, well, what if what if McAfee yeah. comes after you? And like, I thought it was going to end with like Austin Theory running in and attacking Pat McAfee or something, right. either at, either because he's jealous of how well <laughs> how well Pat and Vince are getting along or because it's a secret plot by evil Vince to embarrass Pat McAfee for some reason. I didn't, But they didn't do that either way, so. Yeah, but they it, did. I guess announce that Pat will have a match at WrestleMania. Yes, yes, they did. McAfee has been very good in uh, his matches that we've that he has had. He hasn't mm-hmm. had one in a while now, but McAfee's been good. Uh, if there was anyone that expected Pat McAfee to have Vince on and grill him like uh, Armageddon <laughs> or Bob Costas, I would like to know. Um, what is wrong with you? And it's like <laughs> this is not going to be a hard hitting thing. You don't have you don't work for the company and get Vince McMahon to do like his biggest interview in eight years, um, and and then bring him on and hammer him. It's like it was for what it was. It was fine. Yeah, I don't I I don't know what anyone was expecting. Like uh, like the only thing that was weird or disappointing to me was that they didn't shoot any kind of actual angle out of it like like i thought they were going to it wasn't it wasn't much of a circus it was just vince and pat kind of shooting the s so to speak it was it was fine yeah all right uh edge is gonna wrestle aj styles edge has turned heel edge likes to act (laughs) and uh make a lot of faces and um now he's uh He's gone heel for this feud with AJ Styles, who was a heel for like two years and then was just a baby face one week. Mm-hmm. They didn't really turn him. And now AJ Styles is the baby face and edges the heel. I don't think anybody wants to boo either guy. And uh, mm-hmm. edges baby face that people like. And there aren't many of those in WWE. So um, not what I would have done. But uh, Vince doesn't like babyface versus babyface stuff. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, AJ Styles and Edge uh, 2006 Dream Match here in 2022. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder if Edge can get a good match out of AJ. Uh, I, I, it doesn't light my world on fire. Um, or vice versa. <laughs> yes. I, I just like to throw that joke in there because I, I like to point out that I was on the AJ fell off in like 2017 train. Uh, long before, long before others noticed of that. But uh, his last great match was against Ginger Mahal. Yes, <laughs> he's had good matches. Like he, I liked whatever that whatever year that Brock match was was fun. He had a good match. He had like one good match with Seth, I want to say, but nothing. He's not the AJ Styles of old, and that's fine. But it also means that his matches are not something you automatically look forward to anymore. Right. Um, and Edge the same way. At one point, it was nearly impossible for Edge to have to not have a, you know, four plus star match on pay per view. Uh, that is no longer the case. <laughs> so they, I'm sure they will tell some stories, and there there will be some acting. Uh, Edge should maybe consider cutting his hair or at least wetting it before he comes out <laughs> to do anything physical. Uh, uh, other than that it's 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 a it's fine like it it seems like a match that both guys wanted to do when edge came back so it's good for them that they're getting to do it at a at a wrestlemania i think it's worth pointing out that now in consecutive weeks edge has made subtle sly little references to cody rhodes in his promos and i'd just like to point out that he's a cheeky little devil (laughs) 
That's right. All, all's been pretty quiet on the Cody front. Yeah, kind of strange. We were like, we were really full steam ahead. And now I guess, I guess at the time there was talk that maybe it would be held off till the night after Mania. Yes. So maybe that's why there's just nothing, nothing new to report or to leak out until, yes. until he's uh, actually there. But yeah, it's been kind of a, uh, been quiet. It's been, uh, got, you know, we got all that hot gossip in the first like 24 to 48 <laughs> hours after uh after he left and very little since rest of the mania build uh brock and roman is a title unification match now instead of title for title whatever the hell that means um sure why not uh i think the over under for how long the titles will stay unified will be like three months (laughs) by SummerSlam, i think we will have split titles again well they just hand a belt to Seth Rollins on on Raw probably. once Brock takes the the two belts to SmackDown or whatever. Yeah, possibly they they could they could they could do that. Um, because we've reached the point where that's far enough in the past that people can't remember if it was good or not. Right. So they just know they can reference an old thing, and people yes. will react to it being reminiscent of an old thing. So yes, yes. They, it feels like they've kind of peaked. The, they did, like they did the contract signing for Roman and Brock of uh, this past week, and it's like, well, we still have uh, you know a month until the show. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if Brock's not going to be on the show for a few weeks now, or <laughs> it feels like it's really weird. But they've peaked the main event stuff like a month before. Steve Austin, the report was he's going to be wrestling on this show against Kevin Owens. I. I'm still in the I will believe that when I see it camp. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think if you look at his social media and stuff, Steve Austin is very clearly training and dieting like someone who might be wrestling with his shirt off in a month. (laughs) And we know he's going to be in Texas WrestleMania week, but also Steve's 57 years old and hasn't had a match in almost 20 years and is a perfectionist. And I still think he's going to show up and stun Kevin Owens but I don't think he's going to show up and wrestle Kevin Owens. You got a feeling one way or the other on that? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're, they're so that, like Seth and, and, and Kev, Kevin Owens on TV are like, they're in the tag team geek program. <laughs> yes. Um, act, I mean, I like, I like the Gable uh, Otis act. I like, you know, the, the RK bro stuff feels like that's going to run its course probably this week. And then they'll split <laughs> them up for their, uh, their inevitable feud. So you could put the tag belts on, on Seth and, and, and Kevin Owens, I guess. But um, yeah, it's it, it, with that being said, it doesn't feel like Kevin Owens is being heated up to work with the biggest star in the history of the business. Um, but if depending on what the match would look like, could maybe it's a Dwayne Johnson versus Eric Rowan situation. And he's going to come out in full gear, hit a stummer and pin <laughs> And then it's a it's an eight second match or whatever. Maybe so. I just I refuse to believe that Steve Austin is going to come back and do a eight second match. I think he would want to do a real match if he were going to come back. And mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. That was always his thing. It's like I don't want to come back and stink up the joint. If I want to come back, I'm going to come back and be Steve Austin. And uh, we have no indication that that's going to happen. They did the hair whip gimmick with. Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch on Raw this past week and as soon as they they did the hair whip thing and you heard the the whip crack sound effect I'm like ah it's a work it's a work <laughs> they've done it again they've brought out the fake hair whip sound effect it is a work and then <laughs> like like the, like I was screaming last year at WrestleMania when Bianca Belair whipped uh, Sasha Banks with her hair and then in this case in that case and in this case uh, the uh, the performer that got whipped with hair ended up with giant scars all over their abdomen. <laughs> and I'm like, well, they might be working that sound effect, but they're certainly not working that hair whip. Nope. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's effective. I was like, well, what's the the comeback for that? I mean, the obvious answer is that Becky just doesn't w- wear wrestling gear that <laughs> that exposes her ab- abdomen to be whipped. I'd like to see her wear the 
the Bobby Heenan dog catcher's jacket on Raw next week. <laughs> um, or like a, a bulletproof vest or something. A beekeeper uh, suit. Yes, something like that. I think that would be really fun. Um, that I mean, you could, yeah, you could do more in the build with that. You can have her like, I can't imagine, like it's too pro wrestling to suggest that like she would cut Bianca's hair, right? Like they don't do they don't do angles like that anymore. You would think. You would also think if there's anyone that has the the creative freedom to do something good, <laughs> it's it's only Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, or Becky Lynch. <laughs> yeah, and that, well, that's honestly again pulling out the hair whip like four weeks before Mania and having her really take it to Becky Lynch with the hair whip. I was like, well, if you're doing that in any other company, I would go, oh, Bianca's getting that haircut. And so, and again, I like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if she would, she would want to do that. I don't know if Becky would want to do that, but that would, if they did that angle, that's, that's like a WrestleMania heavy heat angle that would, I think, get people invested in that match and, yeah, and seeing, you know, add some fuel to what it feels. You know, I don't think anything they've done with Becky and, and Bianca on this go around is particularly wrong or bad. It's been fine. You know, Bianca's winning a bunch of matches and Becky's kind of, you know, begging off from her at all at all times. So it's like there's nothing wrong with what they're doing, but it doesn't feel uh, like a particularly hot match. They've obviously already announced that it's it's on night one and it's not the main event. So uh, <laughs> but you could, you know, get people <laughs> more uh you know more invested in it if you if you did like a really big time pro wrestling angle and i was like well what could becky do that would be like a really dastardly thing to bianca and i was like well based on that segment i would say she beats her up like handcuffs her to the ring and cuts her hair yeah you could do that you could also save it for the uh the post mania the rematch at uh wrestlemania backlash or whatever ah yes okay yeah but you could do it. You could do it for Mania too. Yeah, you could do it either way. That, yeah. It's just the question is, does Bianca want to cut her hair? She's been, you know, growing forever and ever. But mm-hmm. whatever. Um. Yes, I was thinking the other night as they were running down the WrestleMania card, how absolutely patently absurd it is that Ronda Rousey is wrestling Charlotte Flair on this show. <laughs> <laughs> there is no reason Becky beat Ronda. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last time Charlotte and Ronda wrestled, um, Ronda won by DQ. Um, <laughs> Becky Becky pinned Ronda in their WrestleMania match three years ago mm-hmm. in uh, a controversial finish that wasn't apparently supposed to be controversial. But regardless, Ronda like only had one shoulder down, and Becky won the title. And we haven't seen we didn't see Ronda for almost three years. And uh, there's every reason for Becky to be wrestling Ronda. There is no reason for Charlotte to be wrestling Ronda. And yet the match is Charlotte and Ronda. It's hilarious. Well, I mean, they can get they can do Ronda and Becky at next year's WrestleMania when people really (laughs) won't care about it. (laughs) So dumb. Like, I already don't (laughs) think like I already think it would be diminishing returns to go to Becky and and Ronda now. Yeah, it would be. It'll be real diminishing returns in a year. Yeah, there's just no reason. There's no reason for Charlotte and Ronda to, to to be the match, and yet there it is, headlining. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's see, Sasha and Naomi are teaming. Great, good for her. Because reasons. <laughs> uh huh. Can't can't quite put my figure on why they would put those two together, but. I mean, they don't have any actual tag teams in their tag team division, so somebody's got to wrestle. Sure, why not? <laughs> and uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, the champions are wrestling each other so on, on the shows, so there's yeah, that. Uh, we did get the official announcement of Drew versus Beautiful Baron. Yeah, that'll be great. Sami Zayn is wrestling Johnny Knoxville. Yes. Johnny Knoxville's been, been very good in everything he's done. So. Yeah, I enjoy I enjoy the shtick. I think he's he's like we've talked about this, I think, back around the rumble, but it's like just a guy who took it like took it all in this wacky world and went, yeah, I know. I know what I'm doing here. Like, I know. Yeah, I know how to do this. <laughs> and he does. Mm-hmm. He's very good at it. Yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of that. 
he's a little hammy Mm -hmm. and like but but he's much better than most celebrities that end up doing things absolutely so that's so that's good all right. Well, we've covered uh, AEW, their pay-per-view co- coming up this weekend. I unfortunately have a quote-unquote hard out as I have to watch Impact Wrestling tonight and I have to watch Impact Wrestling Sacrifice on Saturday. And it's just like the next 72 to 96 hours. It's just going to be wrestling, 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 wrestling for me, which is great. I would like to drop in here on the show that uh, next month I will be driving to queens new york to meet tony storm so uh that'll be a uh, long time listener will know that i was saying tony storm five years ago i was saying tony storm should be main eventing wwe raw mm-hmm. and uh and uh, now i get to uh, shake her hand and throw that to her face so that should be um that should be very cringe so yes stay tuned for that miss miss tony robinson Coming to yeah. a uh, to the wrestling universe store. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to touch on? No, I think that about the, that takes care of it. We're just uh, there's a 48 man tournament in New Japan coming up. That's oh yeah, that's right. New disgusting. Japan Cup started this week. Disgusting. Oh. It already started. It already uh, started. Yeah, started. Yeah. yeah. Two yeah. guys got hurt. Two guys got hurt before the first match. <laughs> it's just <laughs> curse. Curse promotion. All right, well, until next time, everybody, I'm Ethan. <laughs> and I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the rest of life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <laughs>
That's like the only thing I could think of. So you think the inclusion of a of a young boy would really spice things up? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't appreciate I, that for me. But <laughs> I'm not trying to imply anything. I'm just saying. Yes, a, uh, a, a little boy in in his tiny little feathery briefs. Oh boy, would really, uh, really. <laughs> really no i don't know i just think it's like because like what else is there to do we've seen young batman we've seen old batman we're seeing even older batman in another movie this year <laughs> like it, i i don't think well it, you're probably not gonna it's not gonna be like I, you may not even see keaton out of the costume right i mean mm-hmm. so so it, it, him being old might not have anything to do with anything in that movie so we could still see old, uh, a, a, an old Batman movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you would have to establish a Robin in order to tell a Nightwing story at some point, but mm-hmm. uh, that's never really been done on the, on the big screen. Um, let's see. We could we could have a a, f- a funny Batman instead yeah. of uh, dark, grim, like the Nolan movies to me are pretty much the apex of whatever dark gritty Batman movie you want to do. Mm-hmm. And then the Ben Affleck movies I never really saw, mm-hmm. but uh, they also went in that direction and it's like, can we lighten things up a little bit? Yeah, I think that's fair. Like that's, and it's also one thing that I think why these characters other than on the page itself, where these characters were all born, like they tend to lend themselves to animation a lot more than live action because you can do things in animation uh, and use co- maybe certain color palettes in animation that you don't want to or can't use in a live action film. So, but yeah, yeah. it would be nice. Yeah, that would be a direction to take it as if he's not a angry fascist for <laughs> the sixth <laughs> movie in a row. I would maybe just like to see the sky be blue. <laughs> for a couple of minutes maybe the sun could shine maybe it's not always yeah. overcast maybe it's a daytime batman movie <laughs> maybe he goes for a jog because the batmobile <laughs> is not uh, close to him yes swimming yes. <laughs> tennis <laughs> <sighs> oh, wonderful these are all these are all just ideas we're giving to the Warner Brothers Corporation for free. Batman plays squash. <laughs> With I've the actually band around the cow. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually just turned the Batman into Frasier now. <laughs> Which is basically what I do with everything. So that's sure. Good. sure. I try to keep on keeping on. 